For most women in our society, womanhood is incomplete without motherhood. So for most women, it is a dream come true when they finally take seed and eventually bear a child of their own. Yet their dreams are shattered when after taking seed, they lose the child even before it is born. Fear and frustration wear their ugly heads when this predicament persists. One is left with nothing to do but to turn to God. After suffering two miscarriages in one year, Madam Eva Apia decided it was time to release her faith and allow God to take on her case. She acted on this faith and ascended this mountain of all possibilities on the 13th of June 2015 for the man of God to cause a change in her situation. Indeed, God has caused a change to happen in her life. And a year later, she has come again on this mountain, bearing in her arms her child and a heart full of praise to testify to the world the miracle God has routed in her life through his servant, Pastor Obed. Shalom. Shalom, Eva. Shalom, Pastor. Shalom, Church. Can you try and move the mic closer to your lips? Oh, okay. Yes. This baby you have on your lap is a miracle. Yes, please. Now, before we come to her, you happened to be in the service on 31st night, 2013 into 2014. Yeah. And the man of God made a special prayer yes. for people. What was the prayer about and how do you take advantage of it? Um, the man of God said anybody who wants to get married in 2014 should come for prayers and then um, I think there was a small prophet around small prophet <laughs> so he asked us to uh, about what age I think nine about ten nine years. ten years yeah how do you remember that service uh, okay so he asked us to greet him. that small prophet yeah <laughs> and then we did with faith as the man of God directed yeah. to greet that small prophet yeah you shook his hands. Yeah. And when did you get married? Um, that was 13 December 2014. 13 December 2014. Yeah. Before the year ended, you had gotten married. Yes, please. Now, there was something fascinating about how you got married. Yeah. Um, you met your husband or you decided on him in what month? That was August 2014. August 2014. Yeah. And by December, you were married. Yes, please. Because the prophet said 2014. Yes. <laughs> I thought you were celebrating. <laughs> now, I, I, want, I want us to appreciate the impact of that prophetic word Pastor spoke and how it could engineer your life and make sure what God has spoken comes to pass. Now, at that time, you were going out with somebody yeah. other than the one you were married to yeah. now. And just prior to 31st night, you broke up. Yeah. And so you came into the meeting, having broken up um, with your beloved over who you had been with for a longer period of time. Yeah. And didn't know where the next man was coming from. <laughs> sure. In the course of the year, you received a call from this man after a long while. Yeah. How long had you heard of this man before you received that call? It was... I think 2012, he came to my house to propose, but um, because I was going out, I told him no. The man came 2014. Yeah, and he came 2014. He came 2012 yeah. to propose, and yeah. you bounced him mercilessly. <laughs> Don't be move when you are bounced once. <laughs> In 2012, he came, you refused because you were going out with somebody yes. who you thought was your husband to get married. Yeah. 2013, before 2014, you broke up. Yeah. And then the man of God prophesied in 2014, you are going to get married. Yeah. And in 2014, the last time you had heard from this man was 2012. Yes. And she called, he called you. How was the call? What did, what did he say when he called you? I was going to church when the call came and he said... 
Um, I'm calling to receive my response. And I said... Uh, after two years? After two years. You hadn't heard from him in between? No. No contact, no call, no text, no what's up? Yes. After two years, he came. Your story hasn't ended, my brother. No, no, this, this is... This, this, this should be a divine hand. Now, now, this, this should be a divine hand that was operating. Because you had broken con contact with him for two years. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, he calls you and says, he wants his response. Yeah. And what was the response this time? Uh, I laughed on the phone and I said, I'm going to church, so um, we'll talk later. So um, he kept on calling every day. And... Um, I told my friend, he's a close friend, and they, they are also friends with him. So I told him, this is what um, Ben is saying. What do you think? I he said he's a very good man, so um, I think he's the right person for you. So he called again this time, and I accepted. And you accepted. Fire. Keep pushing, my brother. But do it in wisdom. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, and, and that is how, and you accepted his proposal. And the issue is that you haven't had much contact with him. Yeah. And you had to fall on the recommendation of your friend yeah. to really accept his proposal. Yeah. And you, you, you accepted proposal in August by December. You were married. Yeah. God is wonderful. Now, you are married and now you were believing God for a child. In February, you took seed. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. What happened with that seed? Um, after five weeks, I miscarried. No. I went to my hometown. And then... Um, Can we have it some was, order? It was my stepmother's funeral. So I went. And then um, the Saturday, I started feeling some pains. So I went home and I saw blood. So I rushed to um, Confanoche, and then they said it's almost... Um, it's incomplete abortion. Yeah. It means that it's already mis you have already miscarried, but yeah. left some products yeah. which must come out. Yeah. How did you receive that news? How was the experience for you and your husband and your family? Because we were expecting that child, um, it was a shock to me, but... Um, I have to take it like that because it has happened. I can't do anything about it. And you gave a second try. Yeah, I called my brother and then he said, come and see Pastor Obed, you know what to do. And I said, um, I have to take my leave before come coming. I didn't know what happened. I just got pregnant again. You didn't, you didn't know what happened? You got pregnant? <laughs> How? Because... <laughs> you didn't know what happened? so sudden ah. <laughs> it, it was it, it was it was it sudden, was sudden because, because you you wanted to come yeah. and see pastor obed yeah. before you take a seat yeah. but whilst you're waiting to process your annual leave to come and see some way somehow you got pregnant again i see it's understandable, it's understandable. <laughs> it happens all the time <laughs> so you you took c and what was the story with the c um, before then, my mother-in-law came to visit after After your first miscarriage? Yeah. Your mother-in-law came yeah. to visit you to tell you her story? Yeah. I see. She told me that after she got married, um, she had a series of miscarriages. Even she miscarried a seven-month-old um, fetus. Wow. So How many times did she miscarry? I, I couldn't count because she was just mentioning many times twins and all that. So um, after the second miss... No, so so um, she had already given birth to your husband. Yeah. But when she got married to yeah. her husband, yeah. she had recurrent miscarriages. Yeah. Did she ever have a child with that man? No. She never had a child. Yeah. She miscarried all her children. All her children. And now the story she told you. So that heightened your fear... And through to your fear, you miscarried your second baby. 
Yeah, when um, the second one came, because um, the doctor said, when I get pregnant, I shouldn't, you know... Um, Be active. Yeah, I should rest. rest. So I, I told my brother, I'm pregnant again, so um, you, I'll come. I'll come and see daddy, but um, let it go a little. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, five weeks, I miscarried again. When did you miscarry the first baby? Yeah. What time? What, how many weeks did you miscarry the first baby? It was five weeks, three days. Five weeks, three days. Yeah. And the second one was miscarried at five weeks. Five, yeah, five weeks. Um, I think some days. Some days. Yeah. And that got you really alarmed. Yeah. You had miscarried two babies. Your mother-in-law had miscarried all her children. You knew there was something going on. Yeah. You had to seek intervention. Yeah. You decided to come and see Pastor Obed. Yeah. What gave you faith that when you come to see this prophet, something can be altered in your life? Um... For CCI, I've, I've been with CCI for a quite long time. When um, Daddy was at Edum, yeah, that was you used my to come first around time. and visit yeah. and all that. That was my first time. I was going for an interview. He prayed for me, and everything was successful. I completed school successfully, and then um, I think I had miracle money. He prayed once for people to get money. And I had my you were in that share. service yeah, I was where there. he released miracle money. Yeah. And you had your own. Yeah. I had 500 Ghana CD in my account that time. You went home, you checked your account, and there was 500 Ghana CDs yeah. in your account. Yeah. Was the account having any money before then? In fact, I was the one taking care of after my brother, Bernard. So he requested for money. So I took all the money from the account and gave it to him. It was exactly a month I came. So the, the account was barely empty. empty. Yeah. So even I didn't go there to check myself. I called somebody um, from the bank to check for me because if I go and there wasn't any money. It's be embarrassing. <laughs> Yeah. But you had come for the service, the man of God said that people will have miracle money in your account. Yeah. And you called your bankers to verify yeah. whether you were partook in that miracle. Yeah. Even when I said, ah, why? Are you surprised? Are you not expecting this in your account? And I said, okay, okay, I hear. 500 Ghana cities. Yeah. Can you celebrate Jesus? <laughs> and and uh, you also had this chronic... Chest, chest pain. pain and allergic reactions. Yeah, that one too. I came for ticketing and then um, the day I came, I was having the problem. After daddy prayed for me, um, it was left with some small itch in the ear. When I went home, everything was gone. Everything was gone. Yeah, and ever since, I've no experience. Ever that. since, you haven't had that chest pain and yeah. allergic re reactions ever again. Yeah. How many years yeah. now? It's about five years. Five now. years. Yeah. I've Hallelujah. no experienced that. So, so you have harvested a lot of testimonies from this mountain. <laughs> and that is why your faith was so up that this is something small for the God of Pastor yeah. Obed. So you came to meet the prophet, Pastor yeah. Obed. Can you watch the video documentary when she met the man of God? Quickly get me more. Oh, sweet Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Love your neighbor as yourself. Uh -huh. Go and drink, okay? So this morning I have taken care of it yeah. The Lord bless you, eh? I want some of this same malt, eh? Thank you, Jesus. I bless it for you. Drink all of it. Thursday, go and check your blood group. That's it.
saw, you were the one we saw in the video. Yeah. The man of God ministered to you and you were giving further directions to undertake. Yes, Is please. that right? Yes, please. And that was in June. Yes. When did you take seed again? July. In July. Yes, Swift, please. you took seed. <laughs> yes, please. Wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> and when you took seed, we were told to come for directions. Yes. And you did. You followed everything as you were directed by the prophet. Yes, please. When it got to the fifth week, where you usually miscarry, did you have any fears? No, because I've come to see Pastor Obed, so I wasn't afraid. I knew I would carry my baby to ten. Wow. Yeah. You, you had no fear or anxiety no. that this baby would be miscarried? I didn't even remember. You didn't even that, remember? No. I know I'm going to give birth. What faith? Yeah. And you delivered safely. By the and now the baby we saw on your lap. By the grace of God. Turn this, celebrate Jesus. Lap hands together, celebrate Jesus. Now, this, this was something that your in-laws were looking forward to. And your husband was quite anxious. You didn't talk about that part, but very anxious to get a child. Yeah. How has the arrival of this baby been to your family? Even to his family, my father-in-law will call me every day, don't do anything, don't do anything, don't do anything. So I gave birth and by the grace of God, they are very happy and um, they, are, they are very happy and Hallelujah. they are always around their child. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You know, miscarriage is especially, recurrent miscarriages are one of the distressing situations um, to encounter in the hospitals. And usually, especially with the time she miscarried, very often there are genetic reasons. There are certain aberrations um, with the genetics of the, of the zygotes or something. For about 50% of the situation, that is the cause. For some others too, we have immuno immunological factors. The Im immune system kind of fight the baby and destroys it. And this... These are the commonest factors that result in such um, recurrent miscarriages. And in Ghana here, almost nothing can be done for you. If you have this situation, you have to pray for a miracle, yeah. for something to happen. Outside the country, they can do some genetic reengineering, harvest the zygote at a certain point, do something and implant. And even that one, the success rate is very low. And that is what kind of miracle God has wrought for you yeah. by the hand of a servant pastor Obe. Yeah. The situation you had had no medical hope here in Ghana, but here you are here with your testimony in your hands. How does it feel? I'm so happy. I'm, I'm excited that through the man of God, Pastor Obed, he's really a blessing to me. Amen. Yeah, he has always been a blessing, and I thank God for his life. Um, what do I have to say to somebody who's watching you or people who come over here, someone that's come with an issue, seeing what God has done for you, what do I have to say to anyone watching? They should only have faith in God and believe in the man of God, Pastor They should have Obed. faith in God yeah. and believe in the man of God, Pastor Yeah, Obed. he's really a blessing. And when you enter this mountain, you will not go back the same. Hallelujah. Your problems are going to be solved. Praise God. Yeah. Praise God. Can you celebrate Jesus? Yeah. Hallelujah. The woman said, believe in God and believe in the prophet of God. That is what you need for your miracle this morning. I want you to lift up your hands and begin to pray. God has ordained something gracious for you today. This one sat in the meeting just as you are sitting. And in that meeting, they contacted your miracle. Long awaited miracles. Distressing issues were banging on their door. But they took advantage of the divine presence of God, even at work in the ministry of a servant. And they are here with your testimony. Your testimony is right by you. Begin to plug into it, release your faith 